hey 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 welcome back guys and today we are going to do something different today i'll be <laughs> this is a face reveal if you would like to call it but today i'll be recording my screen and i'll be solving the problem and another thing that is different in this video is i won't be just solving the problem which is in today's uh what i say uh, november challenge but also the previous two problems so today we are going to rob a bank and here we are we have three problems while robbing the bank and the first problem we as stated are a smart robber professional as it states so what we need to do we are given an array see and what that array contains is the amount of money each house has so if a house uh, it would be better if i explain it here how do i do that i'll open up watch my hands uh the if the it, it's a long lane and there are different house here and this array uh, at index 0 uh, says that this house here has one dollar this house here has two dollars this house here has three dollars this house here is again has one dollar only so what's the issue why can't we rob them all see there's a security system there and if you rob to alternative house to adjacent house sorry not alternative then the security alarm would go off Me, uh, what i mean is if you rob zeroth house you won't be able to rob the first house you have to rob the second house or the third house because you can't rob to adjacent house easy so what first the first thing that came to my mind is pretty simple what can, what i need to do is i need to uh, i need to add all the values at even and at odd and compare which one is greater and i'll simply return that because that's the maximum in one can rob either all at the even places or either all at the odd places without this issue but there was a slight bit issue there if you look at the example 2112 and what my algo did is added 2 and 1 and 1 and 2 so my algo always returned 3 but we needed to return 2 plus 2 so then i realized it after obviously researching some things and studying some things i realized is this problem can be or has to be solved using dp how uh, if uh, how dp what is dynamic pro programming see dynamic programming is nothing but breaking down this problem into smallest part so let's start with the first house if only let's start with none house we enter a lane and we do not have a house what do we do then simple we can't rob a house return zero we enter a lane and we see just one house what do we do then ah go rob that house nothing else can be done we enter a we enter a lane and we see two houses there okay now what can be done maybe i'll go check out the check out my chart check out my array and whichever of them is greatest i'll rob that so you can see my first three cases are satisfied one if i only have zero house if i have one house and if i have two house now the real problem starts what if i have three house one two and three uh, i have three options here either rob first house and the last house together or just rob the second house if i rob the second house obviously i can't rob the first and the last house if i am only talking about three and this problem as you will later realize can be solved if we divide the whole problem into just three problems now what i did is i created a dp what that a dp i created an array named dp so what it uh, what will it hold it will hold the maximum value a robber can get at that index uh, i have this index so the maximum value a robber can get at this index because it's the first index is obviously the house it has dropped here so the maximum value a robber can get at this index that is the second index is obviously is the maximum of these two house imagine this house has 2000 rupees and this house has just two rupees so obviously uh, the maximum a person can get at this index will also be 2000 after robbing one so now the maximum a person can get at this index is a bit tricky part so the maximum a robber can get at this index is 
either add the this index and the maximum value a robber can get to uh, twice before that index or add the value of the maximum value of a robber can get at this index let's do it with an example if this has thousand rupees and this uh, uh, if the first index has thousand rupees and the third index has let's say a thousand rupees so my value of uh, after robbing these two houses will be two thousand rupees and if my second index the value i have robbed till second index let's imagine that this is a series so will be uh, let's imagine it is four thousand rupees so obviously i'll be choosing this and then i'll be updating the value at that point so what i did is i created an array uh, dp0 uh, i marked the first element of the array as the first element of the number nums and then what i did is for the second element i calculated the maximum out of both simple now from the third element to the last element what i did is i calculated the maximum of either adding that number and the maximum amount that could have been dropped at the index uh, which is one earlier than that number which is one earlier i mean if i am at that number then that number minus two because one earlier would be two not would be one and not two because two is adjacent to it or the maximum value that can be robbed at number one see this was quite simple and at the end what you will realize is the index of length minus one that is the last index will have the value which we are looking for my uh, solution was correct and it took me about 30 40 minutes to write this then we move on to the second question the second question is house robbers 2 so what's different uh, the only thing different is now we are in an area where it is not in a lane but in a circle and you so you can't clearly rob the first and the last house i'll explain you this in real short what we do in these kind of problems is we divide it we divide that problem into two sub part if i rob the first house i won't be able to rob the second house clear so what i do is i create an another array from one to last minus one and then i pass it to my last function that is rob rob one if you could see this function is exactly the same as in the previous question okay and next thing what i do is i create another array from my leaving my first house i start from the second house to the last house and uh, again i pass it through this function and this function returns me the value of the maximum amount that i can rob using these two houses starting at these two houses so what i do is i calculate the max out of both of them which one is maximum and it was quite simple and this problem uh, you just have to do one or two examples to come up with this solution and this kind of solutions are not tough the hard part about this robber series is this problem although it's not that hard but simplifying this problem is hard let me walk you through with an example we are given a binary we are not giving a binary tree let's imagine that uh, we enter a lane that dark valley and what we have there we see only one house and we only have one entrance that is the root now we see that each house has at most two house linked to it and each house has only one parent a binary tree simply so what we can do is we can't rob a child if we have robbed its parent what does it mean if we imagine a binary tree with example two if we have robbed three we can draw four and five but however we can draw one three and one quite simple really simple very easy now what we do is it's really simple we take two cases only <laughs> two cases <laughs> uh, the first case is if we rob root then we check if it has a left child and or a light child and a right child sorry and if it does have a left child then we uh, again rob its left child's left child and its left child's right child and if ha it has a right child then we rob its left right child's left child and right child's right child in this case we don't have a right child's left child so the first condition that is 
will be if uh, something is null some a null pointer is a null reference sorry i'm currently coding in java and it does not have pointers if a null reference is passed here we must return zero so this what this will return here uh, if you could see is since it does not have a right child it will simply return zero cool now what i do is uh, forget about the map right now and the background noises uh, just focus on the if statements see uh, the first if if is if it is null return zero simple no issue but what if it's not null cool then we'll add that value sorry then we'll add that value you, you can see there here yeah. okay now uh, we'll be doing it later on so let's forget about it uh, the first if it's null never mind if it's not null check if it has a left child if it does rob its left child left child and rob it right child right child and add that value to the value since it's a recursive function you have to draw the you have to trace out the recursive tree to understand it better uh, and then again check if it's right child is not null and add rob its right child's left child and right child's right child and add it to the value now what we have here is a value and what we need to add to this value is the value at the root or at the parent uh, at the parent so simply add that value at the parent See, this is one thing and the another case is what if we do not drop this and drop these two and their grandchilds not children their grandchilds that their grandchildren then what would be the case as in this example if i drop 3 1 and 3 and 1 this gives me 8 and but if i rob only 4 and 5 this is a better option then i compare if i rob the left child plus i rob the right child what will my answer be and just return it now this solution would have worked extremely fine uh, let me show it to you actually if i didn't use the map uh, i hope it's working yeah it's it is working um, I went a bit too far. We got right. Okay, so we are doing just this and let's submit. I, I don't know why it's taking so much time, but I hope. I, oh, fuck, sorry. Uh, oh, I mean, no, no curse words and sorry. And I missed two parts i missed a semicolon let's just run the code and not actually submit the code <laughs> straight ahead uh, if i run the code you could clearly see it is accepted without using the hash map what the hash map actually do actually does is uh, oh, oops i've lost my app, hash map so what this hash map actually did is uh, it added one condition uh, since we are recurring you know the hash map we will f encounter if that map ha contains the key at that root of that root I'm so sorry and if it does simply return uh, that key but if it does not then what we need to do is we need to instead of returning this and uh, making another call stack and things we need to simply add uh, add what add the root and this value the value which we were returning previously to the map and then we simply need to return the maps value uh, at root and if we do this and again i'll be first checking out if i wrote something in. yeah i did uh, what was what's the issue i have a map i have a maybe contain contains key map dot contain i'm not sure let me check contains key Uh, it's correct map dot contains root if it's 
Did I spell it? Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. I spelled it wrong previously. Okay. So map dot contains. It's working fine. I'm really bad at sp with spellings. I'm working on it currently. And see, this solution is also accepted. You can do both the solutions. It is totally fine. But this one is slightly bit more. Uh. uh optimized i'm so sorry i just blacked out i don't know what's happening to me uh, it, this one is slightly more optimized and if you're looking for the optimized solution this is what what you will be doing thank you so much